What will it take for us to become happy? This is a question posed by Jonathan Haidt in his excellent book, The Happiness Hypothesis. The book takes into account both leading scientific research on human behavior and happiness, as well as the philosophies of the Stoics and Buddhists to determine how we can be happy. In this summary, we will cover ways to increase our happiness set point and understanding the truth about why goals increase our happiness. The book attributes happiness to both inner control, as practiced by the Stoics, as well as external forces, which many marketers misconstrue to be using material objects to buy status. The happiness hypothesis can be effectively seen as H equals S plus C plus V. Happiness equals our happiness set point plus our living conditions plus our voluntary activities. Some people just have a higher level of set happiness automatically than others. This is where the glass half empty or half full analogy can be used. Some people look at life as opportunities to strive and get ahead and overcome, while others look at their life like a set of challenges and setbacks that are difficult and annoying and why can't everything just work out properly for once, Jesus Christ? There are three ways we can change our automatic thought patterns in order to increase our happiness set point. Meditation, Cognitive Therapy, and Prozac. Meditation involves sitting down and focusing on our breath for 10 to 20 minutes every day. It helps to focus our attention in a non-analytical way and change our automatic tendencies. Where our default thought patterns automatically head to negative and fearful directions first, meditation helps them to automatically accept situations and become solution-oriented. Cognitive therapy is used to treat anxiety and depression and involves being aware of our thoughts and consciously finding alternative and accurate ways of thinking, which in turn will change your automatic thought process. Prozac and other selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors have been shown to be as effective as cognitive therapy in changing automatic thoughts of anxiety and dread. The downside though is this is not a naturally occurring phenomenon and the benefits only last so long as you remain on the drug, whereas even after finishing cognitive therapy, the benefits will remain. Although we have set levels of happiness, there are outside factors that contribute to our overall stress levels. These are things like a long commute, conflict in relationships, lack of control in your life, or even just not making enough money. Being poor is stressful and reduces happiness. The threshold to make the biggest change in happiness is $70,000 per year. Once you make enough to cover your living expenses and have enough to spend on good, voluntary activities, you'll be as happy as you need to be. Any money made after that will only give you incremental boosts in happiness. If we take most people's best and worst case scenarios for life, winning the lottery and becoming paralyzed. You may think the first person will have a huge, long-lasting life of bliss, and the latter is destined to live a life of misery. But really, after a year, they both go back to their default happiness set points. The lottery winner will have a huge burst of happiness up front, but if she changes careers, gets a new car, and buys a new house, the adaptation principle allows the mind to go back to life as usual pre-lottery win. Where the paralyzed person will have a huge hit to happiness off the bat, as soon as they are in physiotherapy and see that they can make little progress every day towards getting better, their mood will increase, and with it, their happiness set point will return to normal. The progress principle states that pleasure comes more from making progress towards a goal than from actually accomplishing your goal. We need to have goals, but understand that accomplishing them will only give us a brief increase in happiness. All those fridge magnets were right when they said it's about the journey, not the destination. The real proven path to happiness is the journey, and along the way we need immediate feedback to tell us if we're going towards or away from our goals. Find healthy activities to do, such as building strong relationships in the community or diet and exercise, and pick goals within that space that you can make progress towards every day. Having strong family and community relationships is paramount to being happy. Religious people are often seen as more happy overall than non-religious people. You could say God makes them happier. But the likelier situation is that being involved in the church community and having a sense of connection to others is what increases happiness. We need to form strong relationships with lovers, friends, our children, and our family in order to maximize our happiness. In order to be happy, we need to have a high happiness set point, which can be increased with meditation, cognitive therapy, or Prozac. We need to have our conditions ideal, which is higher than poverty levels of income and less draining relationships in our life. And our voluntary activities need to be healthy hobbies that can build strong relationships and bodies and give us goals to strive after. The happiness formula is happiness equals happiness set point plus living conditions plus voluntary activity.